All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at the very basics of backup and restore and, and how you uh, backup and restore a database, um, you know, to save your work or, you know, it's the hallmark, really, of what a DBA does. Um, but this really, this initial course on Transact, you have to do it if you want to be a SQL developer in order to, to save your work just to understand you want you know this is how we move databases around the organization back up a production database have it copied to um, a central location and developers can, can you know if it's small enough bring it down to their machine if it's too large then it's uh, stood up on a development machine or what have you all right so we want to look at the very basics here of just the backup and restores. We're not going to delve into it uh, from the DBA level. Uh, so let's open up. Yep. So what do we say? I don't, I don't remember what I said about. All right. A complete backup is a standalone image of the database. That's right. And you've got uh, two different kinds. I believe they've done away with the third kind. You've got two different kinds. You've got a, a full backup and you've got a, a differential backup. Uh, and also, uh, transaction logs are backed up. But again, I don't. Um, I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, or uh, I, I just really want this to be. Uh, the basics so you can understand that the databases are backed up and we can move the back file around and, and we can restore it if uh, something happens. So let's go back here. We've got our store database. We right click as we do for a lot of a lot of tasks. We go to tasks and we back up. We get a nice window. Backup database. It tells us what backup database. Yes, store full full differential transaction log all right we want a full backup we want if we go back to our document a full backup is a complete standalone image of the database so that's what we want uh, where is the location where do we want it uh, this is where it puts it by default so I mean that's fine we'll leave it there all right backup component database backup set yeah you call it whatever you want here, store full database backup. Uh, expiration, nah, well, most people leave this alone. Uh, how about the options? Uh, backup, overwrite the media. Yes, most of the time you really, if you're making a standalone image, you, you don't want to append, you want to really overwrite to make a, a clean copy. And we can do different things here. Uh, again, we don't want to discuss most of this. Um, we really want to uh, just do a basic backup and so that's what we'll do All right, you know what we can do too let's look at the script so you can script it out and we'll do it okay ooh that was quick you can also see the uh, it's really nice that the, that functionality allows you to do a lot of tasks and then see the code behind it that's very very cool where it's backed up to um, again don't want to go into what all the keywords mean just you just backed it up. You've just saved your data and everything else inside your database. All right, now what do we do to restore it? All right, so same. All right, tasks, restore, database. All right, so we want to from the last backup. So it knows that the last backup was taken right here. Right now we can. What if we move it from server to server? Then we want to select a device. Device, is just a, a back file, and we want to go hunt it down. Where, where is it on the file structure file system? All right, right now we want from database. That's fine. And options, yeah. We want to overwrite. That's right. We want to overwrite the existing database. That's yeah, pretty straightforward stuff, right? Oh, do you want to look? Let's take a look. I didn't take a look at the so backup database is the syntax. I mean, it doesn't doesn't get more straightforward than that. To disk, the location on the disk, where it gets backed up to. All right, so the restore is the same. So let's go take a look though. So all tasks again. We want to restore database. Bring it up, and we go. We want a script to take a look at it, right? From disk, very very straightforward. 
All right. Well, that's it on the uh, syntax and the ease of backing up and restoring the database. All right, in this video, we're going to talk about views. A view can be thought of as a virtual table. Views are often used to restrict what users can see. Let's see what we're talking about here. Uh, here we go to connect, drop down, right click, new query, select all. Alright, so we want to restrict. Now we have, these are pretty influential people, or I'm not sure influ influence is probably the wrong word there. Not about infamous. Alright, either way. Alright, so we don't, we don't want there. If these are our customers, we really don't want to be the organization that lets their, alright, let's get out of here, that lets their personal data, their phone number, out. Alright, so we want to restrict what our customer support team has access to. And that is often done by using a view. Alright, we also don't want don't want anyone's email address floating around. But we do want them to be able to send out some mailers and be able to contact them so what, what, what can we do? Well, let's first, so we know we're going to deal with our customer table. Uh, let's cheat a little bit. Customer, right? We want to add that, and we want to add the address. So we want to be able to contact them. So we want their first and last name. But we don't want their phone, and we don't want their email address out there for anyone to see. We do want their primary address, city, state, postal code. Nope. So we say OK, right? We execute and now we have what we're looking for, right? Our result set. In our result set we have uh, Lindsay Lohan, Billy Gates, and there is there's nothing here but what all right sorry about that what customer support staff needs to do the job now all right so so can we do this can we just let's do this let's make this a little easier to see tab there's my tab I'm hitting the wrong thing on it all right, so let's tab him over. All right, and make this a little more readable, and move some stuff around so it makes sense. All right now, it's not making a whole lot of sense. How about this, that's a little more readable, right? So we want their first name first. So we just swap this out. Cut. Paste it. Bring it up. There we go. The city's usually before state, isn't it? comma we gotta add a comma because here we don't need one boink before the from there's no comma All right, how are we looking here All right, Lindsay Lohan she lives at 45 detox lane postal code she's last says lost just kind of so let's just swap that out cut it again comma enter 
Control V. We don't need that little guy. And that's what we want our customer support staff to see. All right. So we create a view out of it. And the create view. Let's go back to this for one second. Uh, again, I, I, I'm trying to drill this into you. A view is a database object. Everything is a database object. All right. I want you to just keep that in mind. And that's this is probably the last time I'll I'll bring that up and try to uh, beat that dead horse. Uh, views are created with the create view command. All right. So, all right. Let's see if that's true. Name your view V. I'm mine going to be VW. It's just how I like to name them. Now, what are we going to call this view? How about we call this uh, mailers? Uh, mailers. How about create view? Well, I can't think of a good name. That's a horrible name. Just spell it out. Doesn't matter. As and that is it. And if we go to it, where is it? It's an object, so it's below views. There it is. Obviously, you want to rename this. Obviously, you want to use a a coding standard throughout the organization. Again. The, the last two organizations uh, I I've been at I implemented uh, the well I designed the uh, not design I, the naming conventions I like VW and, and the, the organization already had VW to the one I'm at now just I like it. you can do you put view whatever you want all right just as long as you use the same thing as long as there's some consistency across your organization you don't want one database having VW and one view and one underscore view try to keep it consistently uh, some standardization across your organization all right so now what do we do now well we I want to get rid of that and we select all from we can drag it there we go let's drag it right there you can just type it do you need a DBO nope and there is our view. And there are the columns and their data types. Pretty neat stuff. And maybe we want to change the view. Maybe we want to leave something out. So how do we alter the view? What if we right click and we script view to create to a new query window. The use statement, we'll talk about this a little more. The use statement tells you to use what database? Well, it's already up here. But if it's not, it will still use the store. Cool. Create view. And we could come in here and oh, we could alter view. Drop this one and create a new one. All right. Views of virtual tables. Good interview question. Where's bring it back? Anything else in the view? No. Nah, we'll delve into views and create a little more complexity with views later. But right now, that's all we really need to know about the basics of a view.